Hi everyone, welcome to Esoteric Tech. Specifically, welcome to the very first video of this series dedicated to Golang interview questions and brain teasers. The focus of this series is to expand your understanding of how Golang operates at its core. Uh, and the goal is really to help you become a more effective and efficient Golang developer through problem solving. The title of this specific problem is A Simple A Pen, so let's hop right into it. A few days ago, I posted this question on YouTube and I solicited some feedback uh, to see how many of you would actually get this correct. And at first glance, it looks simple, but it's a little deceptive. A lot of developers, even experienced developers, tend to get this question wrong. And that's actually indicated by the results. Uh, at the time of this video, 22 people had responded and actually 65% of you got this question incorrect. And that's not surprising. Uh, because for a lot of developers, there's a fundamental misunderstanding of what's happening underneath the hood when you're working with slices and code. And so by the end of this video, you're going to have an understanding of, uh, of this answer and how we got to that answer. Uh, but before that, let's make sure we actually understand uh, what the code here is actually showing and what we're asking. So we have this program where we create a variable A. We set it, we set it equal to a slice of integers, which holds one, two, and three. Then we have B, which is the result of taking a subslice of A and appending 10 to it. And then we print out B and A. And of course, the focus of this, this problem is uh, what is the output of printing out A? And I've got a hint here, which it says it's, it's not 1, 2, and 3. And I'll even show you the result of the program itself. B prints out 110 uh, and A is 1, 10, 3. So I think about 36% of you got this correct. So again, by the end of this video, you'll have an understanding of why this answer is what it is. And I'm also going to point out a couple uh, common misconceptions about slices and arrays that'll, that'll really help you have a more comprehensive understanding. At this point, hopefully you have at least you know, read or heard that whenever you create a slice and code in memory, Go creates an underlying array. So here we have this slice S1, which we create using this make function. We're creating a slice of integers and we're setting the default or uh, setting the length and capacity to a default value of 10, right? So in memory, we create 10 items. Uh, they're all set to the default zero value of an integer, which is of course zero. The other important thing to know is that at its core, a slice is actually just a struct. If you were to actually look at the source code in Go, that's exactly what you will find. It's a struct that holds three fields. One is a pointer to the first item in the array. So it points to the memory address of the first index. And then we've got uh, length and capacity. So for this, this particular slice, they're both set to 10. And I'm going to come back to that concept of capacity. Then I'm going to create a second slice here, S2, and that is a subslice of S1. And we're taking this uh, S1 from the third index all the way up to, but not including, the seventh index. And one important point is that whenever you take a subslice of another slice, those two slices will share the same underlying array, right? And that's what we see here. Again, it's just a struct, so it's pointing to that fourth item in the array because we started with index three. The length, hopefully that's no surprise, is gonna be four, but the capacity is seven. And this is the first misconception I wanna talk about. Whenever you go online, a lot of times what you will see for the definition of capacity is this. You'll see that capacity is the size of the underlying array, but that's not completely true. And if that were true, well, S2 would have a capacity of 10 because it shares the same underlying array as S1. But if you think about it, the first three spots of that underlying array don't mean anything to S2. It's only got seven spots to work with. So the actual definition of capacity is how many items there are from the start of the slice to the end of the underlying array. That's why the capacity here is actually seven. And you don't really need to know that to solve this problem, but there's no question that is an important, important fact to know when it comes to working with the slices uh, and knowing what's happening underneath the hood. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the actual question. 
So we started out with a variable A again, which is a slice of integers holding one, two, three. We create this struct which points to this, this value in memory, which is the first index of this slice. So it's got a length of three, also a capacity of three. And then we create B by taking a subslice of A and appending 10 to it. And I, I'm wording it that way for a reason. Right, so here's our subslice of A. So we're taking everything up to, not including the first index. So the result is really a slice that just holds one value, right? And it's pointing to the same position as A because they're they're first they're they're pointing to that same value, right? And the subslice has a length of one and a capacity of three because it's still got three remaining spots in that array that it can work with. Now here comes the second misconception. When we think about that word, a pen, that verb, right? Well, that, that word really refers to what's happening to the slice in our code. We're appending it. But to the array in memory, it's actually more of an update function, right? And the reason I'm saying it's an update function is because we never actually append anything to our array in memory, right? We either change an existing value or we create an entirely new array that holds the new value. But the length of an array is immutable. That never changes, right? So that's why it's more of an update function. So now, keeping that in mind, if we have this subslice and we're saying we want to append 10 to it, what we're really saying is take the next value and make it 10. We don't care how you do it that's the advantages of working with slices we don't have to know how go is achieving that with the array we don't have to know are you creating a new one are you changing a value we need to know that hey you want that second that that next value whatever index it is to be 10 in this case right and that's exactly what go does it it doesn't need to create a new slice because its length it's still not exceeding the capacity of the array. So it happily takes the next value of the array and says, okay, I'll make it 10 for you. To the slice, it's it just gained a new number for the underlying array. It just changed the second value of that array from 2 to 10. And it does that without regard to the fact that, oh, there's an entirely other slice that's pointing to the same value and it uses those values because its length is three, right? And that's why when you print A, it prints out one, 10, three, because you change the value when you call that append function slash update to the array in memory. Hopefully all of that stuff makes sense. What you should be taking away from this is not necessarily that you know the answer to this problem, but you should be taking kind of the broader picture uh, so that you have a more comprehensive view uh, an understanding of what's happening with slices and arrays and the relationship between the two, which you can apply to other problems later on down the line. If you have any questions, please comment. Please, please do subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to this playlist if you like these types of videos. And I'll see you guys in the next video here on Esoteric Tech. Thanks for watching.